Okay, I just want to make a brief video about quorum sensing. I'm not going to go into a great level of detail here, and I'm going to give one example, Vibrio Fisheri, which is the, probably the most common textbook example you're going to see um, in discussing quorum sensing. So this idea of quorum sensing is basically the idea that we require an autoinducer. Okay, and what is an autoinducer? It's a small molecule secreted by the cell. Okay, so we have some bacteria. And in order to induce these quorum sensing gene system, okay, in order to induce these quorum sensing gene system, we require a certain accumulation. So we require a, essentially a high concentration. We need a high concentration of this autoinducer, which is secreted by the cell into the environment. Okay, so once this level reaches a certain a certain um, density, then we're going to start seeing these quorum sensing genes activated. So that's what I'm saying here. At certain extracellular level, extracellular concentration, um, the secreted autoinducer re-enters the cell. Okay, so once the concentration reaches a high enough level, this signal, these signal molecules here are able to re-enter the cell. Okay, so these signal molecules are able to re-enter the cell, and um, they, as you can see, they bind with the quorum sensing receptors, and they begin this process. Okay. So in the specific example I have listed here, we have Vibrio fisheri. And the molecule that acts as an autoinducer is called LUXR, L-U-X-R. Okay, so the LUXR autoinducer complex, so we have this LUXR autoinducer complex, it activates transcription of the luciferase target genes responsible for bioluminescence. So that's basically how it works. We have this molecule that's secreted, so the autoinducer along with LUXR is able to activate the transcription of luciferase target genes. These luciferase target genes allow for bioluminescence under certain circumstances. So the other detail I really wanted to just briefly discuss about this was that many pathogens use quorum sensing. That's why this could be important for biomedical studies. Um, so the pathogens basically, so if you're if these are pathogenic bacteria, they're not going to necessarily attack the body right away they're going to wait until they know they can overcome the organism's immune system until their concentrations are high enough okay and they might use this quorum sensing they might use this quorum sensing in order to determine whether or not their numbers are large enough in order to overcome the immune response okay so that's basically it I mean that's, that's, that's the basic idea is that we have these autoinducers these autoinducers are secreted by the cell into the extracellular environment okay um, once this concentration is high enough, once the population density, basically the population density of the bacteria is high enough, you're now able to have a high enough concentration of autoinducer which can re-enter the cell. Once the autoinducer re-enters the cell, it's going to bind with these quorum sensing receptors, and they're going to in turn upregulate, or well, upregulate is a good, a good word for it, upregulate virulence genes, or maybe upregulate the genes, like in the case of Vibrio fisheri, for responsible for bioluminescence. So it really depends. They can be aggressive or harmless. It depends. Um, of course, it's important to us for maybe disease purposes, not so much for bioluminescence, but it just so happens that one of the, one of the model or classical examples of this is Vibrio fisheri, which is, has this bioluminescence luciferase target gene. Okay.